Welcome to this video on the Borg RPE scale. We're going to find out what it is and what its uses are in sport and exercise. Let's take a look. The Borg RPE scale is probably the most well known of the various different RPE scales that are out there. RPE simply stands for the rating of perceived exertion, the rating of perceived exertion. And it simply means how hard does a person, whether that's you or someone else, how hard does a person feel or perceive that they are exerting themselves? How hard are they working? And you'd ask them to give you a, some kind of rating. And the Borg RPE scale, we'll talk about the exact numbers of the ratings in just a moment. But a rating of perceived exertion gives you an understanding as a coach or a client or even as the athlete, um, him or herself. It gives you an understanding of how hard you're working at a particular activity. It was developed in 1982 by Borg, a Swedish uh, scientist. It has been revised since, but the original RPE scale, the original Borg RPE scale, is very much still in use uh, across the sports sciences. So we're, we're going to stick with it for now. I will mention uh, something about the updated or revised scale in a moment. It's a subjective scale. Um, so it's subjective in that no direct measurements are taken. So we're not taking blood lactate measurements. We're not taking VO2 max measurements or anything like that or VO2 measurements. Um, it's just a subjective scale. We're going to ask our client or we're going to give a number ourselves that represents how hard we feel we're working. However, that might suggest to you, well, it's not very reliable. But one of the reasons why the RPE scale has, has stuck around for so long is that it's actually been shown to be fairly well correlated or linked to both percentage heart rate maximum and also percentage VO2 max. So those two figures are both nice and neat correlations, not perfect, not, not faultless, not foolproof, but relatively useful correlations that we can actually then use um, to get an idea from a, an RPE um, that a client might give us an RPE score, we can then use that to correlate to and ascertain what their likely heart rate max percentage is they're working at or their percentage VO2 that they're currently working at at that intensity. So it's quite a useful scale. Um, and so therefore, its, its primary use really is to enable us to target a particular training zone. So we can target a training zone without the use of expensive monitoring equipment. It's as simple as asking your client or, or from your own perspective, thinking about what rating you would give the activity that you're currently doing. And it can give you a fairly good, reasonably accurate understanding of where you're at in terms of heart rate maximum um, and VO2 max as well. So a very useful scale and it's kind of stood the test of time. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So the scale itself um, actually begins at number six and runs up to 20. So the scale goes from six to 20, with six being the lightest and 20 being maximal exertion, maximal exertion. So the reason that the numbers don't go all the way down to one is because essentially six is the lowest point um, of exertion whilst you're awake but at rest. So if you were asleep or um, for whatever reason you were in a coma, then you might end up with potentially having lower numbers on the Borg scale. But um, as far as exercise is concerned, those numbers are not relevant. So the Borg scale is generally begun at, at number six. So six to 20. Um, and against those numbers, some of those numbers have definitions attached to them or descriptions. Um, so number six, as I've already said, um, if, you were, if you were doing a workout and it was at number six, you're not doing a workout. Okay, so if number seven would be very, very light. Uh, 9 out of 20, very light, 11 out of 20, fairly light, 13 out of 20, somewhat hard, 15 is hard, 17, very hard, 19, very, very hard, and then 20 is absolutely maximal, um, as hard as you can possibly go. So that, that is the scale, and those are the descriptions for the different stages in the scale. The first thing to note is that when Borg devised this RPE, one of the intentions was that it could be directly linked or relatively closely linked at least or correlated to heart rate. And so very simply, and this is a quite a crude measure this one, um, very simply it could be said that the RPE multiplied by 10 gives you an indication of what heart rate roughly you might expect a healthy adult to be working at at those RPEs. So what I mean by that is um, if you are at 6 on the RPE scale 
you're probably around about 60 in terms of your beats per minute in terms of your heart rate okay all the way up to 200 um, which again is roughly a maximum heart rate for for an adult aged about 20 okay there or thereabouts so the heart rate very very loosely if you're if somebody says to you how hard are you working as you're you're jogging down the street and you you say to them I'm working at about 11 out of 20 you could assume from that that your heart rate is up and around about 110 beats per minute it's quite a useful shorthand way of looking at it so heart rate is quite usefully correlated not perfectly again um, don't forget that it's 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 kind of loose it's kind of rough and it, the, these things move with training and depending on the extent of your training and your cardiovascular fitness in particular um, but it's a it's a decent rule of thumb it's a decent shorthand in terms of percentage vo2 max then again uh, this time instead of giving um, a, a percentage vo2 max against every single number on the borg scale i've just got some zones here so if you're intending to work at somewhere between 40 and 60 percent of your vo2 max you're likely to want to pitch your training at an intensity that feels about 12 or 13 out of 20. this really is as simple as that if your coach says to you right today we're going to do some uh, work and we're going to be working around about 60% of our VO2 max without getting a bunch of equipment out and doing a load of tests you could then say okay so we'll work at 14 out of 20 and you'll pitch your intensity and again it's perceived it's just how you feel you'll pitch your training you'll pitch your intensity at 14 out of 20 and that will correlate roughly to around about 60% of your VO2 max at the top end of, of that um, little segment that little phase there um, that little zone um, from 60 to about 85 percent of your vo2 max you're looking at 14 15 or 16 out of 20 then above 85 percent of your vo2 max so you're working with quite significant intensity at this point uh, so be somewhere between very hard and very very hard um, 17 18 and 19 on the rpe scale your vo2 max is going to be up beyond about 85 percent of your vo2 max so that's the, that's the intensity you're working at and then obviously 20 is maximal so we're um, at least theoretically um, we're up at 100 percent vo2 max uh, alongside heart rate and percentage vo2 max we've also got percentage of maximum heart rate um, which is similar um, again it's i've done this in zones rather than specific uh, heart rate max percentages against each individual borg number but um, it's not too dissimilar to the percentage vo2 maxes but maybe just nudged up slightly um, so 12 if you're working at roughly 12 out of 20 on the borg scale you're probably looking at about 55 percent of your heart rate maximum okay so again if your coach says right today we're going to work at um at 80 percent of our heart rate maximum then you're going to again without all the equipment you could probably pitch that fairly effectively by thinking to yourself okay so 80 percent of my heart rate maximum is going to be about 15 on the Borg scale so I'm going to work at about 15 out of 20 what feels to me like about 15 out of 20 what feels like hard work and you can pitch it in that way without getting all the equipment out um, in terms of training zones then um, just notice here that I've split the the colors essentially are, the, are these same zones that we've got with the vo2 max and the, the percentage vo2 max percentage heart rate max training zones anything less than about 11 um, is so light it's essentially not going to be, to be particularly helpful for any training other than really rehabilitation training or, or real beginners um, anything that's that's even remotely serious about improving your fitness would need to be above about 11 or 12. once we get to 12 um, we're in the aerobic zone in the aerobic training zone um, somewhere between 12 and 13 is is almost entirely aerobic but it's sufficient intensity for us to actually get some positive adaptation so we're not we're not dropped back down into the the fairly light zone where we're not really making any long-term adaptations so 12 and 13 we're, we're working predominantly aerobically and then between 14 and 16 somewhere in there probably a little closer to 14 but somewhere in there we're gonna we're gonna hit or get to roughly our lactate threshold which would be roughly the point where we move from working predominantly aerobically 
to predominantly anaerobically or at least predominantly using the lactate system so most of us our lactate threshold would be roughly around about 14 out of 20 so if you want to do some lactate threshold training which you you may have heard of and there are my other videos that you can go to to find out about that if you wanted to do some lactate threshold training you'd probably try and pitch it around about 14 you might nudge up a little bit if you're particularly uh, if you're particularly fit as far as your aerobic fitness is concerned you might push to a 15 or something like that if you're uh, if you're just starting out um, maybe lactate threshold training is not for you if you're just starting out but if you are and that is what you wanted to do then maybe somewhere about 13 out of 20 on the ball scale would be ideal once you get past about 17 out of 20 you're pretty much into the anaerobic zone you're working so hard now you're working very hard the description tells us so from this point on essentially you are predominantly stressing the anaerobic systems the aerobic system has pretty much dropped out and is no longer really contributing to energy demand or energy supply which means that once you get past about 17 you're not going to last all that much longer in terms of being able to provide the energy required for exercise finally you remember i said at the start of the video that there are uh, there is a an updated version of the borg scale um, and it was felt that perhaps it would be simpler to have rather than going from 6 to 20 to literally just go from 0 to 10. Um, and so that has been done um, partly because it simplifies things, but also partly because it allows us rather than to be thinking in terms of um, most of this, as you've seen, is mostly related to aerobic and cardiovascular fitness. Um, but if we wanted to use the Borg scale or the RPE scale for strength and muscular endurance and that sort of thing, just um, across relevant across different kinds of intensities we could use a, a slightly adapted scale which is the cr10 borg scale and that literally just goes from zero which is um, equivalent to six on the original borg scale up to 10 which is the equivalent of about 19 on the uh, on the original borg scale so zero up to about 10 you can see it's kind of weighted towards the more important end the action end of the uh, of the scale um the the section the sky blue section where we've got re rehabilitation we kind of skip through the the numbers there uh, and it really picks up with um equivalent to about 12 on the borg rpe it comes out about uh, roughly three it's not it's not a like for like it's not exactly the same um one across to the other but it's there or thereabouts and so some people prefer to use the new borg version some people prefer to stick to the old one you'll just have to um check if you're if you're online and you're looking at workout plans and things like that you just need to double check which borg scale that you're actually working from so that's it as far as the Borg RPE scale is concerned. Um, don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon. If you've got any questions and you want anything clarifying, please put comments in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. But other than that, that's it for today's video. Um, take care for now. See you in the next one.